Hi, I'm Andrew Yoshimura, and my co-author is Christoph W. Borst, and we present a study of remote lecture viewing experiences in social VR, namely in Mozilla Hubs. We believe that social VR may provide increased presence and social interaction. Students attended lectures both on desktop monitors and in VR headsets, and while both methods provided a high uh, overall experience on average, we see trade-offs. For example, Desktop viewing is widely accessible and easy to deploy, but it suffers from things like decreased presence. On the other hand, we see higher presence for headset viewing, but the overall experience suffers from simulator sickness. Our main motivation for remote lectures is the risk of COVID-19 and many universities switching to remote lecture content. Uh, other motivations include reduced travel and social stress. In terms of related works, we found that VR for Education is suggested to increase presence, motivation, and engagement. For effective remote learning factors like technical difficulties, distractions, and viewing-related discomfort need to be understood. Studies of technologies like video conferencing show that although they may be good for remote learning, technical problems and distractions are common drawbacks. Various previous works have used VR for remote content delivery such as for an ACM WEAST 2019 virtual poster session in Mozilla Hubs, an IBM meeting in Second Life, and a program committee meeting of IEEE VR 2009 in Second Life. While there have been various studies comparing headset and desktop VR, neither of them have consistently been found to be better than uh, the other. So giving a brief overview of the study, we conducted a study during seven weeks of remote classes it consisted of 13 computer science students, most of which had limited prior VR experience, and while the students don't represent the general population, we believe they're in a relevant demographic group for the early adoption of emerging technology. Uh, in terms of class delivery method, the teacher taught in a VR headset, while students attended either on desktop or in VR headsets. For the class structure, the class was a virtual reality class, which met two times a week. Lecture content was related to VR devices, their relation to human senses, and interface topics. Uh, students additionally had projects, which were game type projects or independent studies with implementation. On the figures here, we can see a class lecture in Mozilla Hubs and also a student presenting project uh, updates in Mozilla Hubs. <coughs> More on the class environment in Hubs. So Hubs is a browser-based social VR platform. It works across many different platforms, so you can use it on mobile or desktop or in a VR headset. Hubs supports customizable rooms and avatars, and also the ability to upload PDF and videos. Uh, looking at this video here, we can see a class being taught, we have a teacher avatar with a live video of the teacher also being presented, uh, uploaded slide content, and also supporting videos for the lecture, and we also have all of these student avatars dispersed throughout the room. So here's a breakdown of the VR devices used during this study. It's important to note that each of these devices have six degrees of freedom tracking and two controllers. The wide variation in devices reflects real-world use, where users could be expected to have different types of devices. <coughs> Moving forward, we're going to talk about the procedure. So we gave a background questionnaire in the second week of class, which gave general background questions. Uh, we gave a desktop and a headset viewing questionnaire in weeks two and five. Uh, so for example, we had half of the class attend in desktop and the other half in headsets. And they would take their respective viewing questionnaire. So that was in week two. And then in week five, they would alternate and then uh, take the other questionnaire. So students reflected on the lecture experience from that day for the viewing questionnaires. Um, the actual question content included our own questions and abbreviated versions of these popular uh, questionnaires here. 
We also gave a final questionnaire in week seven where we asked students to reflect on the overall experience of the entire semester. Here's student responses for presence, various social presence measures, overall experience, and usability. Questions were rated on a scale from one to seven, ranging from strongly disagree or very bad to strongly agree or very good. Uh, we see that headset viewing sees significantly higher presence. Other subscales did not see statistically significant differences, though in some cases distributions have different shapes. For example, perceived effective understanding has desktop results being more neutral and headset results being more spread out, including more negative and positive responses. This may suggest a more consistent or less notable experience on desktop than in headset. Uh, we also see a good average overall experience for both headset and desktop viewing. Additionally, in the final questionnaire, we find a high final impression of headset and desktop VR as a medium for remote classes overall. We also see high mean usability for both systems. So moving forward, we found that negative ratings in the headset cases appear to relate to cyber sickness symptoms. Uh, in terms of sickness, we asked five simulator sickness questionnaire inspired items. From the graphs showing distribution of symptoms, we see that headset viewing sickness was more prominent with less students experiencing sickness in the desktop condition. This inspired us to take a further look into how sickness correlated with question responses. So here we find a high correlation between average headset viewing sickness score and overall experience rating given by these plots. In addition to this, we found uh, strong negative correlations with the average headset sickness score and usability, message understanding, presence, and co-presence. Uh, we found that average sickness was not correlated with the overall experience ratings for desktop viewing, which can be shown in this plot here. So further investigating sickness's effect on the headset viewing experience, we omitted the five high sickness cases. This resulted in no negative responses for these various questions. Um, from this, we can gather that sickness has a notable effect on the viewing experience for headsets. These results may give us a glimpse of future VR experiences in the event that sickness is addressed. We note that the uncontrolled home environment students were in may contribute to sickness. So moving forward, in the viewing questionnaire, we also ask students to compare in-person and video conferencing classes to the hubs lectures. Here we can see student responses with the number of related responses for positives and negatives of hubs versus in-person and video conferencing classes. For positive aspects of both VR approaches compared to in-person classes, students value the ability to stay at home, the level of engagement or interactiveness, and some aspects of content viewing. Positive aspects compared to video conferencing are mainly related to the level of engagement and interactiveness, not having to be seen or use a webcam, and avatar presence. The negative aspects for both VR approaches compared to in-person and video conferencing classes are mostly technical difficulties. Although simulator sickness is not mentioned here, it may be directly related to several comments about technical difficulties. <coughs> Here we see responses from students uh, rating the helpfulness of 12 features of remote VR lectures. For both headset and desktop viewing, we see that students value presentation features the most. We can see this in the top five features rated by mean in headset and desktop viewing, which are the same with different ordering by means. So the presentation features that students value are the pointer used by the presenter, the presenter's avatar, the slide display, videos, and live real-time communication. <coughs> Here we see technical problems and distractions that were experienced by these students. Uh, for headset VR, technical problems reported most often were audio and video glitches. Desktop VR had fewer technical problems compared to headsets, with the main reported technical problem being audio glitches. In terms of distractions, the most highly reported distraction for headset and desktop VR 
was noise in the real environment around the student. Moving forward, we asked how helpful the following communication methods were and found that all communication methods received a high rating on average. These results show that multiple factors contribute to effectively communicating with others. Some of these features are only achievable through attendance methods like headset VR, such as hand motion or nodding or bobbing the avatar head. When asking about desirable missing features in headset and desktop viewing, several comments suggest improving communication methods. From this, we can gather that students value communication and most likely find it key to their learning experience. Here we see student ratings for the helpfulness of various features of the teacher avatar. It's clear from this and some other student comments about improving student and teacher avatars that students want an extended avatar, for example with full body tracking and mouth movements. We can see on the right here that the Mozilla Hub's teacher avatar is minimal in nature. Tying in with the importance of communication, some students also mention they want a more reliable way to get the teacher's attention for questions. Continuing the avatar discussion, we asked two questions about features of avatar movement, how students position their avatar to avoid invading someone else's personal space, and how much they move their avatar when someone else enters their personal space. Slightly higher mean ratings in headset VR may suggest more behavioral interdependence in headset VR than desktop VR, but this is purely speculative. Student comments indicate that another reason for moving their avatar is for better visuals or audio. We also asked students about their sense of belonging to a university class for different remote class approaches they experienced. As expected, real-life classes received all very high ratings. The most notable feature was that VR in headset was rated very highly, indicating that students feel more like they're in a natural university environment while attending remotely in VR headsets, uh, mainly when compared to these other approaches. Finally, we asked students how they would prefer to attend a remote VR class if all glitches were fixed. The results show most in favor of an even mix of headset and desktop viewing, providing good motivation to further explore these methods for attending remote classes, and also to study their trade-offs with respect to different class topics and activities. In conclusion, we presented a study of remote lecture viewing experiences and social VR. We found that desktop and headset VR viewing generally provide good experience for remote lecture viewing. Headset VR was found to see significantly higher presence. We saw earlier that negative headset ratings appear to be connected to sickness, given by the high correlation of multiple question subskills with the average sickness score. Technical difficulties and distractions are also common obstacles for remote class delivery. Students experiencing technical problems or sickness in our study may have been accentuated by real-world environments that they, uh, the study took place in. This may be improved by more system tuning or experience or by future developments in home VR systems that improve visual stability or quality. Finally, we found that students seem to value having avatars and not being seen on video. This concludes our presentation. Thank you.